Shevo says it's a bull trap. You might be right. That's why I want to take a look at all the data. And uh, you guys go from there. Hold on real quick. Is there anything open? Yeah, I do. Before I get into the next ones, let me shut some things down on my computer because for some reason I'm very glitchy. I have an idea what it is. It's Google Chrome. Be right back. Okay, all done. Or it's probably the fact that in this room it's a, almost 100 degrees. Because that's what the temperature is here in El Paso just about. All right. Bootsy, every time I think I feel like I know where the market is heading, it pumps, it pumps back up to three quarters of a point hikes like what W2. That's the thing. That's the same thing with me. Like I thought for sure the market would really go down, but it didn't. And that's why like you just have a plan. You just got to stick to the plan. That's it. Three piece says, Rob, you're never bullish. That's true. If I ever come out here and I'm super bullish, that might be the, that might be an opportunity, uh, the time to really take a look at some, uh, buying opportunities because i'm never these days bullish oh hey the dixie's going down what do you think about 10-year yield and dixies are going down that's good news i mean if the dollar is going down fantastic isn't it good for cryptos and precious metal? good for cryptos precious metals probably so yeah you should use brave i do use brave but i also had chrome open for some other stuff i was doing but yeah Michael Corleone said something almost like that. All right. I'm in good company. Chaotic says 2023. It's going to be better than 2022, I can tell you that. But I'm not for sure. I believe in the four-year cycles, so we're still hitting it. Old guy Texas didn't, didn't hit the 100 basis points, but I still bought. Yeah, I bought. Like, right as things were like kind of, you know, we did the live stream with Simon around noon. Uh, mountain time and the numbers were already out so when we were talking about them it's like so i asked simon a question and i just pushed it to him and then i was just on my phone and buying and that was it worked out well probably should take some profits right yeah uh, who said this Ozzy Curtis says, I'm always bullish. Even when I am not, I am. I'm bullish when I am. Gosh. You know, if you look at the, the grand scheme of things, like the long term, if you just zoom out, I know people are sick of hearing this, but it's true. Three year, five year, 10 year. I mean, that's it. The big thing is, you know, what's your timeline and what's your risk tolerance? And that's really what it comes down to investing. And are you, do you want to be an investor? Or do you want to be a day trader? Uh, do you want to trade on leverage and uh, and get in and out? That's up to you. For me, this is this is just things that I do, and it's not those things. Uh, yeah, yeah. Michael's got a good point. I'm not looking for the day when the crypto market is 100 trillion. Things will be boring. We will all miss the volatility. Maybe. Uh, I won't miss my portfolio being. 100x from what it is right now, I'll tell you that. But that's a good point. It's, uh, I think we'll be okay. And you know what would be crazy at that point? Because when I got in in 2017, I was listening to YouTubers that were around in 2013, and I used to hate their guts because they would always tell me the same stuff I'm telling you, which is just zoom out, three years and five years, and da-da-da. And I'm like, man, of course, it's easier for you. You don't deal with this volatility. And now I'm spewing the same thing to you guys, which is, hey, just gonna take some time and it really that's really what it comes down to i know <laughs> rob can you please tell my wife that buying bitcoin now is better than taking a vacation take a vacation that's mental health advice yeah sometimes just better to get away and here's the thing um remember in 2021 in december even i i was wrong i said hey I think December 2021 is going to be fireworks and there's going to be some elongated cycles and it's going to go up. And it didn't because every time you think you know what's going to happen, it does the exact opposite. Every, it's just like almost every time. So in all honesty, I hope your wife, if she's not listening, then I'm just going to tell you, take the vacation. You'll probably thank yourself later. Is Coinbase wallet safe? As long as you control the private keys, yes. But I just use a ledger, so I don't know. 
Great question. Afterlife, next bull market strategy. I'm putting that together as we speak. And uh, one of those is getting the right software because I used to do everything on a spreadsheet and it just takes a lot of time. I know some people like that. I got a lot of things going on. I just want some automated processes. Like we use uh, CryptoTrader, now called CoinLedger for our taxes. And it's a direct API integration, read only. They can't do anything, just read only. I use it for two years, works out fantastic. And they're trying to get uh, this integration where it'll tell you, okay, you bought Bitcoin at 21,276. You are on this date. And then on this date, you bought Bitcoin at 19,724. You are at plus X percent. Here's how many dollars you would be in profit. Here's what you could potentially do to take those profits. That's what I would like to see. And if anybody knows of another uh, software that does that, I'd love to see that. Because right now everything's on a, on a spreadsheet and it just takes a lot of time, especially for me because I'm buying, well, now I'm buying every Sunday. Well, actually I bought yesterday, but um, if I start buying every day, it gets tricky. All right. Dan, Don, the Saboro, summer ride 20, 30, then dump again. Wouldn't that be great? And you know, it'd work out okay if you do those things that, that I do, do whatever you want to, take the profits. Let's say you bought, let's say you bought when I bought on the 13th, when well, the CPI numbers came out, we're about 20,000, right? So it's at 20,000. Let's say you bought a full Bitcoin, then it goes up to 28,000. No, let's just say 26, 27,000. And you sell. Well, you got seven grand profit, everybody's happy, and you just wait. Then it goes down to 20K again or 19 or whatever else. That will work out pretty well. Is that what's going to happen? Maybe. Uh, but it's up to you. Dan, would love to see you at the Rare Bloom meetup in Denver. I think that's the Cardano thing. Is that right? I won't be there. Sorry. Bears sound off where you at. Don't, don't tempt them because I'll tell you right now, as much as we like, yeah, we told you. The bears are like, just wait. It'll go bearish. <laughs> and guess what? They're right. Yeah, a little younger, a little puffier, though. Rob, do you have any miners? I do not. If not, why don't you, since you have a place in Texas? I should. I just don't. I don't know. I, maybe I should. Uh-oh. Chris Brunger says, 10-year yields have big head and shoulders, big falls. Look for the look for the TA and go from, I don't know. Uh, that's a great question. So Jared says, Rob, you're going to move away from your value cost averaging back to dollar cost averaging. So yesterday was the, the value cost averaging. I'm going to move into dollar cost averaging probably today. It's got to change some settings and that's it. I'm going to tell you who I want to use as far as uh, exchanges now. So I was using Coinbase, but I just, with Kathy Wood dumping all her stocks, I know some people say, well, Kathy Wood doesn't know what she's doing. Like, okay. She's a pretty reasonably smart lady, uh, but she dumped a lot of stocks. I don't know if it's all of them, but it makes me concerned about that platform. And I've heard some rumblings and I won't say anything because it's again, just hearsay. I have no idea, but I've been taking all my crypto off of, off of Coinbase, but I'm like, why even deal with it? So I'm going to start to use uh, uh, FTX and now Kraken, and I'm going to use Binance US. And those are the three. And then any, any kind of decentralized exchanges I can, I can use from there. And that's it. So that's all we got. Simon is a good luck charm. Simon is a good luck charm. Simon, just follow him on Twitter. Simon U, StormX. Great insights. Oh, no. APIs. What are you going to do? FTX comes close. <laughs> Bears, you disappoint me. Yeah, that's it right there. <clears throat> Coinstats. That's the, that's the one that I have here. You know, Coinstats has a pretty good thing where you can put in your Ethereum address. You don't have to even give them any kind of API integration. So your Ethereum address on your MetaMask wallet, and it'll show you all the things that you have in there. Just look at that. I mean, you can do the same thing with MetaMask, I suppose, but sometimes it's a little bit painted. Just saying. Ah, uh, don't play with leveraging and wait it out. Yeah, you know, but if you want to do it, like I just, 
I shake my head at the people who do like a hundred X leverage. I'm like, I don't think that's, that's what, that's a great idea. And then just between us. So like these rules, these rules that I'm talking about here, like, I mean, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. That's a, that's a basic given. And then everything's a scam until promos. That's, that's not, that's always going to be there. Nothing on exchanges. Look, even I lose some things on exchanges. Why? Well, when I use Coinbase, I can't immediately take it off. Things have to clear. And of course, sometimes I get lazy, but there is some provisions there. And also, if you're going to put a stop loss in, it's pretty tough to do that on a ledger. So you got to leave some on there. So there's always like some, some gray areas, for, even for me. But these are what I try to attain 100%. And then this one word says no leverage. Look, just between us, like if some people use like two to 5x leverage, I'm not going to say that's like the worst thing of all time. I'm just going to say that I wouldn't do it, but they probably do it because maybe they have a bigger, higher risk tolerance. I just say these things because it's safe for me. And I think it's safe for other people. And of course, take profits along the way. But I'm not saying that you know you have to do all these things 100% all the time because uh, it doesn't work like that. Even in diets, you know, if you want a six pack abs, it's not like you're going to, it's not like you can potentially have rice cakes and chicken all day long. It's ridiculous. Kill myself. All right. <laughs> Why do you have a pool in your living room? That's just a green screen. It's a, my mom's basement, so don't worry about it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, check the Dan Dejan channel. That's the channel if you really want to be a gambler. Like we're kind of gambling right now. We're speculators, let's be honest. But Dan Dejan, those are, well, they're doing pretty good, I might add. You know what? Let me show you something. Burp, 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 burp. So there's a link in the description. And all the things that I, everybody, like you all know that the things that I talk about, I've invested into, right? So like when I get excited about Cardano and Solana and, and Bitcoin and Ethereum, because I own those things. And the reason I don't get excited about Ethereum Classic is because I don't own it. So just so you know, so we're on the up and up. And then also, ah, uh, to for transparency, I did this. There's this link right here. It's called 5% DGEN Plays. These are the, the four. Bop. Uh, the four Dan DGEN uh, projects I've talked about and done, done a deep dive on and how I've done so far. So like, well, actually, we should, up, we should update this right now. This ought to be interesting. So again, so Kishi, on December 15th, we bought it at 0 0.01. Well, how much is it now? Yeah, how much is it now? Huh? Okay, well now it's 40 cents. So down, whoops, 40 cents. 28th, 28th, 28th. So we're up 26 X, that's not bad. Everdome, I don't know how this one's doing. Zero zero seven. Mm -hmm. Still up a little bit, and then fame I think is doing pretty bad. Huh? When's zero five? Huh. Come on. Still up a little bit, and then of course. Uh, this is what it is today. But you have to understand that against Okishi, I've sold some along the way. Everdome, I've sold some along the way. Everdome went up to, gosh, where did it? Well, fame went up pretty well. Let's see. Yeah. Fame was at 47 cents. I didn't sell it around there. I sold it around here, 30 cents. And then so on and so forth. And then the next one is Sweatcoin, just so everybody knows. Like, Rob, why do you talk about Sweatcoin so much? Because I'm going to invest a boatload of money into it. That's why. Although on the DGEN channel, I would say, for me, this is just 3 to 5% of my portfolio investing into it. I'm not dumping everything into it. That's crazy. But uh, yeah. And then people will say, well, how much do they pay you? I didn't, they didn't pay me squat. I got to pay them. But I do get access to all their people. And I get a little information here and there. So, and of course, they get to be on my channel. <laughs> so yeah, that's what it is. 
All right. <laughs> Simon used the smartest 12 year old I've ever seen. That guy does look young, doesn't he? But he's not. You know, he's 47. No, I'm just kidding. He's a young guy, though. Let's see. Yeah, smart. Majet, I stay away from Celsius and Luna. Good for you. Rob, you need to learn for. You need to learn to trade from Frankie Candles. There's so many indicators. Rob will take a vacation most legibly. Might as well. Uh, yeah, she, she lets me stay here. It's pretty nice of her. Yeah, bottom is at 17.5. Again, I didn't buy enough, but I thought it was going to go lower. Honestly, I thought that it, Bitcoin would go lower. That's why like, I can never time it right. <laughs> has your Voyager token been holding up? No, it has not. What? Hi, Rob. Celsius's customers database transferred externally. That's not good. I wonder what they're doing. I wonder if they're getting ready to sell off and liquidate. Beardy says Celsius sold our email address. Why wouldn't they? Well, they need money. Oh, man. What a cluster. Guy came on here, lied right to my face. Went on James's channel, lied right to his face. Had BitBoy on for an AMA, lied right to his face. Unbelievable. <sighs> Don't trust anybody. Mm, what's the most profitable project you invested in? Over the long term, it's really, it's really been, gosh, it's really been Bitcoin, if you think about it. I mean, if you want to, if you want to balance everything out, profitable and risk. Because I remember, I remember buying Bitcoin at like 5K, and I went up to 67, 68K, something like that. But um, that's been one of the one most profitable, profitable, but non-risky. As far as like, I'll be honest with you. You know which which did a really good return, Luna. Sorry, this is the truth. So I bought Luna last year around March, somewhere on there, February, March. And then I wrote it all the way up and I sold a bunch of it in December. And the reason why I sold a bunch of it in December wasn't because I thought it was like the right thing to do. It's my wife was like, look, we got to get this house here, the Puerto Rico house. There's a, if you just do a Google, uh, Google YouTube search of uh, digital asset news and um, Scaramucci, there's a video and we talk about how we bought this house in uh, Puerto Rico. It, it was 100% cash and I had to get out of some positions and Luna was one of them. And then, of course, that was the big one. However, I was ticked off because I'm like, no, I, I know it's going to go higher, which I should have listened to myself with the four-year cycles and it didn't. And I kept dollar cost averaging on January, February, March, April. And I lost a good five figures. I can't remember how much it was. That's gone. But... In the grand scheme of things, it worked out. Yeah, freaking Luna. Yeah, Robert, back again. Follow Simon Dixon on Twitter. He's that guy's on top of it. That guy's on a mission. Yeah, Thomas. You know, let me talk to you guys about this. Do your own research. Because that's what everybody says. Do your own research. Do your own research. Look, you can do a ton of research and you'll still screw up. Look at Mike Novogratz. When he and his team got into Luna, do you know how much due diligence they probably did? I mean, months and months. Uh, a, ton of, a ton of manpower before they got into Luna. And they still screwed up. Because they lost their, they lost a lot uh, doing that. Do you know how many people did their due diligence on Celsius? Simon Dixon from Bank of the Future, one of the very few, one of the very first Bitcoin investors, Bitfinex, Kraken, Coinbase investors. They did a ton of due diligence, and they still screwed up. So even though like we can say do your own research and it's your fault because you didn't do enough research, that's not true. I think what it really comes down to is that. There are so many variables out there and you have to really keep on top of everything. Like, here's, a, here's another thing. If you didn't see my video on June 12th where I said, hey, there's something going on with Celsius. You should probably take all your, you know, your, your crypto off. I'm going to do that. It's up to you. And then nine hours later, 
they shut off withdrawals. And the same thing happened with Voyager on June 22nd. I did a video and go, I just found out that they did over a half a billion dollar loan to three hours capital. I can't forgive that. I'm taking everything off. If, if you weren't on top of it, even though you do your own research before, you'd have been screwed. And all that, and a lot of you, probably that's what happened. Not a lot, but some of you did. So like, don't beat yourself up because even though you do your own research and your due diligence and everything else, People are shady, man, and you can't trust anybody, not even me. Just assume everybody's lying to you. Maybe I'm lying right to your face right now. So don't trust anybody, and you'll be a lot better. Ugh. Tesla? Ah, is Tesla in the house? TND Tesla. <laughs> but Rob, this time it's different. It's never different. I recommend you guys pick this book up. This time is different. Uh, eight centuries of economic data brought to you by two economists, uh, Reinhardt and Rogoff, as they just take a look through all the different crashes and problems that have gone around through human history. And they'll tell you every time there's the, the four worst words in finances, this time it's different. It's never different. It just repeats, which is why that really concerns me about uh, the 80 and 100 year cycles. Uh, and just do a Google search of the fourth turning You'll know what I'm talking about. Scary stuff. Oh, here's a great question. Vasek, Rob, what would happen to that loan if you were still on with Celsius? We have lost that house. I got liquidated. I, did, I don't know. If I've talked about this before. So what happened was, <laughs> what had happened was, I was in, just in April, we were in Europe for the Coin Bureau event. And uh, it was me and Guy. We got to sit down and talk in this big, nice conference. Very nice. And then we went to France and Spain and things like that. During that time, the market was slipping. I had gotten margin calls. And because we were all over the place, I just didn't answer the margin call uh, because I wasn't paying attention or internet service issues or whatever else. They liquidated me. And it was like around when Ethereum was around $2,200, $2,300. So what happened was um, they liquidated the cash amount uh, what are 250,000, whatever it was. So they liquidate that to cover that position. I had over collateralized Remember, in member for the normal noobs or the plebs like us, we have to two X, three X or four X collateralized, not for institutional investors. No, no, no. You guys do whatever you want to do. Three hours capital. Here's a half a billion dollars morons. So we have to over collateralize that over collateralization that, uh, wasn't met or was or was not met, was returned back to my account. I got to keep the money, which was already already gone because I paid for the house. And actually it worked out pretty well. Now, remember, when you get, a, when you get liquidated, it's a taxable event. When you're taking loans out, it's not a taxable event. I mean, in America, I don't know where you're at. So that was one of those things. And then I, was, I wasn't really too happy with what had happened. So I just took that Ethereum and stuck it in my ledger off of the Celsius. So worked out okay. But remember, I did still leave around 3% of my portfolio because I'm an idiot. Even though I was telling people, take everything off, just didn't do it fast enough. 3% is still sticking there. And I'll never, I don't think I'll see 100% of that again. Who knows what it'll be. If it's not for, if, it, if the Simon Dixon plan doesn't work, I don't think it doesn't work. Sorry. So that's my story. <laughs> Everyone's on top until they're not. And you'll slip. We'll all slip. That's what happens. <laughs> Does a tattoo count as due diligence? Ah, that's a Mike Noah Gratz rub. That's pretty good. Oh, not meme. That's right. Let's see. Who wants to be a admin? You get a wrench and you get a wrench and you get a wrench. Not meme. That is a moderator. Joby Anderson as a moderator. I don't know, you guys. <laughs> TND Tesla, not me. <laughs> that. Ted Numb as a moderator. 
Okay, come back tomorrow and we'll do some more moderators. I've only I've already got like 50 moderators now. So remember, if you're a moderator, uh, moderate the craziness. But if someone's talking bad about me, let them vent a little bit, unless it's like crazy uh, stuff. Like Rob's a lizard person from another planet. That's of course you know you can block that. But uh, if someone's like Rob's a jerk because he told me about Voyager and Celsius. Well, that is true. You have a point, and I was wrong. I was wrong about that. I was wrong about the call for Bitcoin 150K in 2021. I was wrong for the VGX to go to $30. I was wrong about those things. Some things I got wrong. Some things I got right. Yeah, Joby says it right. You have to keep researching even after the initial research. It's totally true, unfortunately. Yeah, pay, don't worry. Things will come back. Digital Bobby. And on that note, I'm nobody's dad on this channel. So look, that's it. We were going pretty long, 32 minutes. It's a long time. I gotta, I gotta get out of here. I gotta meet a guy about a container. So look, if you guys do me a favor, it'd be great. Just hit the like button. That's it. It's very simple. Like button. That's all I ask for. And uh, that's it for today. So if you like today's video, thumbs up. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. So thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Just hanging out with me for like an hour. That was awesome. So thanks so much. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you on the next one, which will be manana. Adios.